Well, listen, I'm, I'm going to bring on Mike Shoesmith, and we're going to continue this conversation. And by the way, all of you that called the sound off line, um, God bless you for that. Thanks for listening today, and thanks for sounding off. And uh, the cool thing about the sound off is, I mean, that's your minute for you just to sound off. I mean, if you want to dialogue with me, that's fine. I'm cool with that. And, you know, I love to dialogue. But I just I also want to give folks in a minute, a full, clear minute of radio time, uh, speaking from coast to coast to people is, is a huge thing. I mean, I mean, you get a chance in that minute to speak to more people than most people get to speak to in their lifetime. So I, you know, I, you know, when you ask me questions and want me to communicate, I mean, dialogue with you, that's fine. I'm cool with that, but it kind of robs your time because I'm not going to go more than that one minute because the phone lines are jammed. I mean, you hang up and another one calls. You hang up and another one calls, and we've got multiple lines and they're all lit up, and we didn't even get to everybody that was trying to call in. And I'm so sorry. And we might do that again a little later on in the show. Uh, but here, I'm going to bring on Mike Shoesmith. But just before I do, let me say this, folks. Kim Davis, Rowan County clerk. Mike Bates, the owner and manager of the station, dear friend of mine for many, many years, he came in during the break. We were talking. He said, got a question for you. Kim Davis, he said, is she Republican or Democrat? Well, I mean, you know, I, I, I was answering emails and on the phone and trying to get ready for the show and the music was winding down. I said, Mike, I, I, don't, I don't have a clue. What is it? And he said, she's a Democrat. I said, are you sure? He said, I'm 100% sure. I've been to her website. She is a Democrat. Now, now, see, folks, that's interesting because I thought only Republicans were homophobes, you know. <laughs> you know, the Republicans, we're, we're a bunch of homophobes, right? She's a Democrat. Interesting that you don't hear the media keying in on that. It can't be that one of their own is a homophobe. Well, she's not a homophobe. She's not afraid of homosexuals or homosexuality. She's standing in the Word of God. She's standing in 6,000 years of human history. She's standing in over 200 years of American history. She's standing in the foundation of humanity. She's standing in common sense, reason, and sanity. She's standing in biomechanics. She's standing in physiology. She's standing in human anatomy. And she's saying, I'm not going to issue a marriage certificate to two men. That's not a marriage. And I know some of you out there listening say, but the law says it is. Well, the law is wrong. According not to a preacher on a radio saying it is, it's according to the words of the same Supreme Court justices who gave us the law two years ago. They said, if we ever do this, we will be illegal and unconstitutional. Go read the majority opinion of DOMA, Windsor versus U.S. You'll see. I, I don't know how much more I can emphasize this. God bless Kim Davis. The, these, these radical gays, the gay stoppos, they are going to overplay their hand, folks. This is going to blow up in their face. Because Christians across America and politicians are coming unglued over the fact that in America... We have jailed a woman because she thinks a marriage is between a man and a woman. We put her in jail because the government has invented a new religious doctrine. And if you don't hold to it, beginning with government employees, we will jail you over it. Then we're going for religious institutions. Then we're going for pastors. Then we're going for government employees. People, mark my words. Mike Shoesmith, sound off. Well, I mean, uh, uh, as I listened intently to the, the first segment, Carl, um, uh, you said some very profound things. Uh, you know, one, of course, being that uh, you love many men uh, in the in the truest sense of the word. I mean, you have you you would not you would not uh, uh, you know violate the love you have for them by violating them sexually. Uh, you know, I, I had a tremendous amount of love for my uncle, who uh, who died of AIDS. You know, because. Um, I was too young to reach out to him with the truth. You know, like, if you keep allowing other men to do this to you, you are going to die. And, uh, you know, we have this backed up by the CDC. But, you know, I just want to say this also, that uh, even though this is, a, this is a tragic thing, a travesty, you know, the first person to be locked up in the U.S. for, uh, uh, for, uh, for this type of thing, and really essentially a violation of our First Amendment rights, 
Uh, people who have been listening to me on Freedom Friday for the last seven years should not be shocked or surprised by this at all, because uh, I have been warning people uh, um, often, as often as it, came, as, it, as it was appropriate, that here in Canada, um, you know, when, when the Gestapo uh, infiltrated the government and then uh, subsequently the, uh, the court systems and uh, forced, um, forced their agenda down the throats of the, uh, the, um, the Canadian public, um, uh, not enough people stood up and said, no, 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 this will not stand. Uh, marriage is not between, uh, between two men or two women. Marriage is between a man and a woman. And uh, this is a conservative value that works uh, in every other culture. Why are you trying to force this down our throats? And, but the few people who dissented against this were, in fact, thrown in prison. And some of them are still in jail today, by the way. This was going on, has been going on in Canada. I think I came on the show uh, and, and gave a few names, actually, once of people who are, you know, rotting in jail for saying, look, you know, uh, uh, this is not uh, right. And uh, they were labeled as haters and thrown in prison. And I said, look, like, if you guys don't get a handle on this south of the border, you're going to face the exact same issues. And I think a lot of people were, were taken aback by that, saying, oh, this is the United States of America. You know, we have the First Amendment, free speech, freedom of religion. Uh, they're not going to start throwing people in prison over this. And yet here we are today. Uh, the Gestapo has uh, thrown a, a woman in prison for saying uh, this will not stand. And and, and now she's going to be corralled into the category of dino, which uh, stands for Democrat name only, you know, much like these uh, poor guys who happen to be members of unions who are forced to vote Democrat because, uh, you know, the union is a decidedly Democrat. Although I'm not sure how much longer that's going to be with, uh, with uh, well, anyway, we won't go there today, but you know, that's my take on yeah. it. You know, well, people, sh- people shouldn't be surprised by this. Well, and here's the thing. we, You and I, right here on this radio program for years, we've been telling the people in America, what was coming based upon what has happened in Canada. We've been telling them. Right. Yeah. Right. And, 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 you know, I mean, listen, John McCain, right here on this radio program, John McCain it was talking uh, to uh, Mike Bates on a Your Turn segment. Mike was interviewing John McCain just, two, just two years ago. In fact, we've got right. this on the PNN News and Ministry Network. We've got this clip two years ago. Mm-hmm. Mike Bates, and I'm going to have to paraphrase, but he basically was saying, look, is gay marriage going to come to America? Are we going to have to deal with this? It's going to open up Pandora's box. It's going to cause massive, massive confusion at every level. And, and, and John McCain, there's a rhino for you. He said, and, and I'm going to paraphrase, but this is what he said. He said, oh, no, that'll never happen. Never happened. Never happened with this Supreme right. Court. And he said, and even if it did, the Senate would stand up to it. The Senate would correct it. Sure. Right. Well, 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 he was wrong on both counts. Not only did this Supreme Court do it and break their own words of law, but the Senate hasn't even peeped. Neither has right. the House. No one has. In fact, most of the Republican candidates have been running around, maybe they're going to change their mind now that a Christian's sitting in jail tonight, but up until the last couple of days, most of the Republican presidential candidates have been running around saying, well, you know, the law is the law. It's the law of the land now. We've got to uphold the law. No, we don't. No, we don't. It's not in the Constitution for the Supreme Court to rule on the definition of marriage. It's not an enumerated power, so it belongs to the states. And, and they, didn't, they, they themselves said that, They right? said that. Yes. Right. Now, would that not be grounds for impeaching the Supreme Court? You know, there is a, well, there is a groundswell. There is a groundswell for that. There is a precedent for that. Uh, Supreme Court members have been impeached before. I mean, this may be. We may not. We, we may need to see an uptick in this uh, this movement to impeach the Supreme Court uh, on the grounds that they have violated their own uh, their own statutes yeah, the con- uh, of conduct. Yeah, the Constitution gives Congress purview over the all, over the entire federal court system. Now, the Supreme Court is a constitutional office. The other federal courts are not, as, as far as being specifically named. Uh, but, right. but, but, but the federal court system is established by Congress. But the Supreme Court is, of course, listed in the Constitution as one of the branches of government. But Congress has, has the balance of powers on that. The Supreme Court is not the final, last law word of the land. They're not supposed to make law. They're supposed to determine if something's constitutional or not. Well, they made law. They're, they made law against their own words from two years ago, and they violated the First Amendment by creating 
a religious doctrine that is now imposed upon the entire nation. And again, I have legal experts that are backing me up in my opinion of this. And people can say I'm wrong, and they can say the experts are wrong, and that's fine. Um, that's your opinion. But you go get you some legal experts to put in writing that you're right. Right now, um, I'm, I hold the high ground on that. And that is, th th this ruling, Mike, has has created a religious doctrine. Because, see, the definition of marriage, that is religious, you know. I mean, it goes back to the beginning of history. Islam right. says it's a man and a woman. Judaism says it's a man and a woman. Christianity says it's a man and a woman. The Bible says it's a man and a woman. 6,000 years of human history and practically every civilization on the face of the earth says it's a man and a woman. The United States has said for over 200 years it's a man and a woman. And just a few days ago, the Supreme Court said, no, nah, it can be whatever you want. That's the new religious doctrine of the land. And if you don't agree to it, we'll put you in jail. And a federal judge has now done it. Well, and, and, and you know, Islam, the Islamists will, will happily stand by and watch uh, the, the so-called Christian America uh, put the gun of liberalism to its uh, own mouth and pull the trigger. They'll be more than happy to do that. Oh, yeah. You know, in Canada, in Canada here, we, Canada, we have a federal election coming up in October, by the way. The conservative government has been in power uh, on the federal level here for, uh, for over a decade, and in this time, We've seen no conservative platform uh, become established. You know, to this day, we still have no law governing abortion. No law. Listen to me, folks. There are only three countries in the world which have no laws governing abortion. That's China, North Korea, and Canada. Wow. Think about that. No wow. laws. Go only three countries, and Canada is one of them, uh, with North Korea and China. This is amazing. Under a conservative government... Uh, and uh, we have gay marriage in this in this country under a conservative government, and there's a federal election coming up, and the people are fed up, and it looks like a, a liberal government may rise up in Canada in October. And guess what? When that happens, I believe the last the last dynamic that is protecting Canada from a total annihilation is the open support of Israel. And let me tell you something: the liberal parties in Canada do not support Israel. They will throw their hat in the ring with Palestine, and I fear for my country. I do. If the conservative government, the only thing they got going for them right now is their support of Israel. Yeah. And I believe that their support of Israel is due in large part to the fact that Canada relies, uh, you know, 80% of the economy is driven by the oil sector in Canada. And I think that uh, the conservatives in Canada, they keep, they keep the pro-Israel rhetoric going because it uh, bolsters the price of crude. Uh, and I think that they will be in favor of any action Israel takes against Iran, by the way. We may talk about Iran after the break, but, uh, uh, you know, if the liberals take over in October here in Canada, I don't know. I may be moving down to Panama with a friend of mine who just recently moved there. <laughs> but uh, uh, I don't, because America doesn't seem to be the, uh, the, the place to go anymore. I mean, you know, they're locking people up. Uh, you know, they, they're, they're, they've come after the, the government workers. Are the pastors next? I yeah, don't know, yeah. Carl. Well, no, it, it, absolutely. Listen, uh, folks, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back, America. Yeah, listen, I'm going to bring Mike Shoesmith back on here. But the deal is this. Again, as I have said, Mike, I've got you on, so you can jump in in a moment. But just, folks, here's the deal. Here's the deal. I'm going to say a couple of things. Then I'm going to hush and let Mike go off on this. But here's the deal. It, this is not this radical gay agenda. I, listen, I've said this before. I've got so many things going through my mind. I've said this before. I want to say it again. I'm going to say something you never dreamed that you'd hear a Baptist preacher say. If this Supreme Court ruling was simply about some kind of fairness or parity for people who wanted to live that, I'm going to use the biblical word because I come from a biblical worldview, for that perverted lifestyle, Okay? I don't think the government or the church should be looking in anyone's bedroom windows. I'm just going to say it. I don't think we should. Now, they've got to answer to God, just like I have to answer to God. Okay, But, but to say, if that's all it was, I would I'd still not like it, but I could live with it. But I knew. I knew that's not what this was about. It's not about fairness and parity. It's about heterophobia. It's about Christophobia. It's about bibliophobia. It's about family phobia. It's about hate speech on a part of the the Gestapo. That's what it's always been about. 
It's about targeting. It's about using the long arm of the law of the federal government, the baseball bat that the federal government uses, and the Supreme Court played right into that hand and handed them the bat illegally. See, I defy the Supreme Court ruling. I'm, I'm with Kim Davis. I defy it. I refuse to acknowledge it. It is not legal. It is not constitutional by any definition of the word. These liberals running around, you know, well, it's the law of the land. It's the law of the land. Yeah, yeah, and so were the Jim Crow laws, and, and, and so were the laws, of the Supreme Court rulings defining that black people were not people, too. Okay? So get off this stuff about it's the law of the land. This is not the law of the land. This is anarchy. This is godlessness. We have a Christian woman sitting in jail in the United States of America because she dares to believe that a marriage is between a man and a woman and not the perversion of two men and two women. By the way, in Luke chapter 17, Jesus said the last days right before his return would be just like Sodom and Gomorrah. That spirit would sweep the world. Tonight, a woman who is of the Christian faith is in jail in America, not North Korea, not China, not Canada, <laughs> in America because she thinks a marriage is between a man and a woman. Mike? Well, you know, this whole thing reminds me of, um, you know, you, uh, you said something uh, earlier that uh, that I think it actually may have been during the break. Uh, you said, you know what, uh, uh, the, the, these people, um, you know, it's not about love, it's about lust. You know, like uh, like you said earlier, you know, uh, you know, you and I love each other, uh, but sure. we, would, we, you and I, you and I would never be on the list, the CDC list that determines what what societal group right. is responsible. What was what societal group is responsible for the rise in HIV cases every year? There is only one group of people, folks, that is responsible for the rise of HIV every year, and that is men having sex with men. That's not Mike and Carl saying that. That's the Center for Disease Control. That's right. So what are they saying? If you understand math at all you know that if men would stop that activity, uh, cases of HIV would be on the decline. Yeah. It would essentially go away if men would stop doing this to, to each other. And you and I would never be on that list, even though we do love each other. And I'm reminded of, uh, you know, you mentioned the, the end-time dynamics a minute ago. One of those end-time dynamics is in the last days, men will be lovers of themselves. Right, yeah. So, and, so and he, he, yeah, and love would grow cold, and lust of the flesh would rule the day. I mean, we're living in it. We're watching it. This is not love. This is a perverted flesh lust. Right, and this is yet another reason, you know, apart from my own C, giant C, I told you so earlier, this is yet another reason a C, I giant told you so from Jesus himself, who yeah. said, look, folks, this is coming. And it's going to wax worse and worse. So, you know, uh, while we should, as Daniel said, the people that do know their God in the last days or in the time of the end, he said, the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. So we should be, we should be, uh, we should be standing as a bulwark against this. There's no question about that. But at the same time, you know, we should not be surprised when we see all these things happening because Jesus said, "Look up, your redemption is near." Right. So, I mean, I guess that's the end. Of, that's the, that's my positive. As Brandon says, that's my good word to end it here. <laughs> Look up, your redemption draws near. And listen, right. uh, hey, Carl. Carl, I love you, man. Love you too, buddy. <laughs>